Hello people, welcome back to my channel. The topic for today's video is logistic regression. Now from the name itself, you might uh, think that this is used for regression. Well, not this is not used for regression, but it is mainly used for classification. Then you might have the question why it is called as logistic regression or why it is regression. Regression mainly because it uses the underlying principle of what we already know that is our simple linear regression. So which we uh, saw in the previous video. So if you would like to watch what is linear regression, I would suggest you to check that first before watching this. Now I talked about this is basically a classification mechanism. So classification is a binary classification. that an email is spam or not spam diabetic is uh, or a patient is diabetic or non-diabetic zero or one true false or it can be used for multinomial classification that is multi-class classification so it can be like you are uh, putting into three classes this and this and this so it is extended for binary as well as multi-class classification. Now let's understand how this basically works. So say we have two axes like this, zero, and we have our dependent and independent variable. So we have our dependent variable and we have our independent variable here. Now say for example, uh, I am just putting a line like this. So what we get is uh, these are some of our instances which are present here. Now what this basically forms is our linear regression. So we are using the underlying principle of our linear regression and let's see how uh, it is transformed into logistic regression. Now say for example I am uh, doing a drug test for one particular disease and I have different age categories of different persons. So say this is my midpoint here. So here say on this axis I am taking this age and here I can essentially represent some probability values so say I am having the probability value probability of having uh, that particular disease so it's from 0 to 1 and if it was for probability of 0 that I was taking so this graph would be this way so now I am considering this graph that is probability of having that disease whether it's high or not so along with age i am categorizing into different classes so i have two classes of age age less than 50 and age greater than 50 so this is my 50 and here is up to uh, any number so say this is uh, less than age less than 50 and on this side i have age greater than 50 up till any number now what this basically does is for one particular instance you have this equation of this line now this is given by y is equal to mx plus c essentially in this case uh, you have your c intercept or y intercept that is c as 0 and you have m is equal to 1 so this essentially becomes y is equal to x but uh, for a generalization, I'll just consider y is equal to mx plus c. Now, what you want to have is for any particular uh, age group. So, say for example, I'm taking one particular instance. This is one instance in which the age is less than 50. So, if I want to check for the probability of that particular age group uh, suffering from that disease, what it can have is, uh, say I'm taking this, this value comes out to be this uh, that means uh, our predicted and actual is same means for that particular age group which is less than 50 it has a lower probability of uh, having that disease and say if i'm taking this particular uh, age group which is more than 50 what i can observe is this is somewhere beyond this so this is uh, you can see that the linear models have a drawback of having the decision boundary from minus infinity to plus infinity so there you cannot have a finite boundary where you can do the classification. Now when we talk about classification that is binary it can be 0 or 1. 
so you cannot put that uh, 0 or 1 into minus infinity or plus infinity so for that what we need to do is we need to squeeze this particular line that is our linear line into some function and so essentially in logistic regression what we mainly use is a sigmoid function so that sigmoid function is given as 1 upon 1 plus e raised to minus y now if you put this y that is this equation of this line into this that is 1 upon 1 plus e raised to minus mx plus c what this line gets transformed into something like a curve in this shape a curve of this form now if you see this particular line is squeezed into form of an s shaped curve so this is called as a sigmoid curve now what you have is you have your probability values that is squeezed between 0 and 1 but it's not going beyond uh, that is infinity or minus infinity so this essentially what is your logistic regression and so we mainly use a log function here for calculating the error now say now uh, if you are taking this particular instance and if i ask to calculate the uh, probability that that particular age group is suffering from that disease you can draw a line like this and you can see that it's very low so it's actually true and for here say if i'm taking this particular instance i'm calculating the age group whether it falls into the probability of having a disease then that is high means uh, there is a high probability that this person falls into uh, this uh, disease probability so now uh, basically to calculate the error or how do we do the classification we essentially have this logistic now this logistic basically comes from uh, the log loss function so basically to calculate the error or the cost we mainly use the log loss function now log loss function is given with respect to one particular attribute and the probability so we essentially say we have yi that is this y we are plotting it against some function that is our probability so this is essentially a pair plot which you can see so in python you essentially have some kind of pair plots so where on one particular dimension you take probability and for each of the attribute you check what is the uh, plot for this particular uh, attribute so you get different values from that so essentially we take the target so y is the target log to the base uh, for two class problem you have two for three multi class you have three so i'll just put it as log and log to the base of c or e pi that is first probability plus one minus y i log one minus pi so this is my log function so if i just iterate for n instances and if i want to take the average this is my log loss function so by this it classifies different instances into positive and negative classes or zero or one so it does the classification in this way so since you have a log function in order to calculate the error this mainly goes into your gradient descent for calculation now you can see that this particular sigmoid curve that i have drawn is in some fashion but it can be say this way or it can be this way it can take any shape so the question is how we can decide which is the sigmoid shape to keep or for better classification so that essentially is done by two operation you do a movement and you do the stretching so if you just uh, make this s curve and if you want to move it up or down so that is essentially handled by your intercept so along the intercept you can move this s curve either up or either down and if you want to stretch this to make this way it is done with the help of this slope so slope that is m gives you the stretching and your c intercept will give you the movement in either upward direction or downward direction so by that you decide which 
particular S curve or sigmoid curve is essential for your logistic regression classification. So this logistic regression has got certain advantages or benefits. So the very first one is it is resistant to overfitting. So uh, if you have different uh, classes, so this is immune to uh, overfitting. So overfitting can ha uh, can't happen in this. Second is that it can be extended to multi-class problems as well. And you have some uh, negatives that it still creates a linear decision boundary. So that is one problem uh, with logistic regression and say for example if you have a decision tree like this. Now in this what you have is uh, you have an instance space something like this and if you want to consider that is a root node so that is your entire data set. Now you have two of these decisions that is either this way or this way. So that is seen by a line like this. So where you have two different partitions, where you have two different uh, decisions from the root node. And then if you see, you have two different further uh, classification. So that is say on the left side, you are doing the partition. So this is say one region and second region. This is 1.1, 1.2. And similarly on the right side, you have another region that is 2.1 or 2.2. So similar kind of linear boundaries are seen in logistic regression where it falls prone to some errors. Now we have talked regarding the log loss function. So our major goal or the outcome when you just put all the values for classification our major goal in log loss function is to minimize this particular equation to a large negative number. So if we are successful in achieving this so that our gradient reaches or converges to zero, then we can essentially apply our logistic regression. So well, that was all regarding the logistic regression in machine learning. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to watch this video, please do like, share, comment. And if you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching this video.